On May 17, 1984, one of the greatest tragedies of the Soviet era occurred in Severomirsk. In the first minutes and hours of the events, many thought about the beginning of World War III because of the characteristic mushrooms that appeared over the city. According to the official version, on May 17, 1984 in the city of Severomirsk, the main missile base of the Northern Fleet, in the military unit 63976, there were explosions in the missile silos. The form and power of the explosions were identical to the three nuclear strikes. The Northern Fleet instantly lost 50% of its missile armament, the tragedy took, according to various estimates, 200 to 300 lives. Most of the dead were technicians who had been sent straight into the fire for an unsuccessful attempt to dismantle and deactivate the ammunition. The fire started as early as May 13 at the depots at the Okolnaya base due to improper storage of ammunition. It was a peaceful spring day. At 6 p.m. most of the officers and midshipmen were returning home from their strenuous service. At 6.15 p.m. smoke was seen in the technical area of Unit 63976. A senior officer of a neighboring unit called the duty officer of 63976 captain of the third rank Viktor Sadovlikov, who answered that he knew about the fire and was taking measures, in 25 minutes he, sailor Ramaz Jabrailov, a guard, and several guardsmen extinguishing the fire would die in the first big explosion. At 6.35 p.m., missile launchers without warheads spontaneously take off from the burning area. They perform intricate pirouettes in the air and fall into the rocks at a distance of one and a half kilometers from the depot. In Severomirsk, people are standing in front of the entrance to the park. They are watching the fireworks. A lot of kids have rushed out. At 6.43 p.m. the first big explosion follows at the site of the fire. The shock wave causes the spectators to fall to the ground and seek shelter. The first explosion occurred in a warehouse where about 500 warheads for anti-aircraft missiles were stored. A few minutes after the first big explosion, an alert was issued for the Northern Fleet, Combat Readiness No. 1. Actual, this form of alert is only declared if war breaks out. So it was relayed to all the coastal observation posts and from them to the ships at sea. It was also declared danger of chemical attack. The fleet CP was evacuated to the rock. The rock, this is a special control point for the fleet in case of nuclear war. There were three major explosions and many minor ones. From the words of an eyewitness, word for word, when the fire began, the rocket engines started firing and then they started blowing up over the rock face. Lots of them. It was an awesome sight. A mini salute of sorts and people, no, to get away, stood on the street in packs and watched. Till the second explosion blew up. By the way, the impression was eerie when something strongly resembling a mushroom grows over the city. And so several times. Many people thought that World War III had happened. After the first explosion and the declaration of alert combat alert number one. In fact, the ships urgently began to go to sea. All the norms for the time of going out on alert were overlapped by half. The cruiser Kirov was left at the pier. All of the ship's anti-aircraft systems were put on standby to destroy air targets in case missiles from the depots flew into the city. On some ships, resting watch sailors in shorts and vest took their places on the iron seats of the anti-aircraft units. In spite of the cold weather, not one of them left their battle post before the alarm went off. There was a nuclear submarine under loading at Pier 17, and at the time of the first explosion the nuclear missile was in the stage of being loaded into the silo, with the nuclear warhead lying on the pier. The loading was accomplished in the shortest possible time. Another nuclear submarine, which was standing near the Okolnaya base itself at the time of the explosion, was taken out to sea by tugboats. After the second explosion most of the houses in Severomirsk were left without glass. Fleet headquarters lost all the glass in the windows. A 3 by 10 meter glass planchette with operational information about the actual location of ships, submarines and aircraft collapsed. Large panes of glass in the House of Commerce simultaneously moved a meter away from the walls and collapsed. At the seventh school, the roof sagged. The first fire truck entering the fire zone was destroyed by the explosion. Witnesses observed pieces of red metal and wheels from the vehicle in the air. Part of the personnel of 63,976 with officers on alert, with combat weapons, moved to the technical area, to the place of explosions and fire, and take part in extinguishing the fire. The wind blowing from the city carries the toxic cloud of the explosion toward the sea. This circumstance saved the city from the gravest consequences of contact with the toxic products of rocket fuel combustion. An eyewitness wrote. At that time I lived at 25 Safanov Street. I was doing my homework, I was 17 then. 
with some interval there were two rocket launches, as it seemed to me at the time. Called a friend from a 12-story building across the street and said that the warships were leaving the piers and disperse into the bay. Got interested. I took my binoculars and looked out of the window at the place where the missiles had left. This place was just visible in the gap between 11 and 9 houses on Stjavneva Street. I managed to see only thick black smoke, roofs of fire trucks, I think even hurricanes from the airfield, and small explosions. Then the whole thing jumped up, and a bubble of fire began to appear from under the ground, which in a second turned into a very bright flash, Hollywood rests. I closed my eyes from the bright light. Then I managed to see the mushroom growing, and the explosion through several missiles with damaged or burned hulls. Then, the blast wave reached me, and I was thrown from the window to the floor, the window was open. The same wave blew out the front door to the apartment, both of them, in these buildings, they are double doors. Came next door, the wife of the admiral, said her husband called and told us, and the neighbors to leave the windows and doors open and move away from the house, and that the worst is over. Which I did. Half of the people from our entrance hall went down Stjavneva Street to the heating plant. There I was caught by the second explosion. I automatically turned away and clearly saw how an explosion wave was felt in Stjavneva Street and on Lomonosova Street, the glass in the windows went out. In the evening, Svoboda was talking about possible tens of thousands of casualties, they were jammed to the utmost. In one 1.5 hours after the second explosion the long-distance phone calls began, are we alive? The radiation background was normal, but the civilian population did not know about it yet. A large convoy of cars was moving toward Murmansk. Mothers gave their children to strangers asking them to take them out of the city. There were no instructions at the checkpoint to close the exit at once. After some time, a commandant platoon and a marine platoon were sent to the checkpoint between Severomirsk and Murmansk to check the documents of soldiers leaving the garrison. At the moment of the incident, without any special command, a photo group was engaged, and the events were recorded, but all these materials together with the report were later handed over to representatives of the special department of the fleet. By morning the fire was contained through the heroic efforts of firefighters. The warehouse fire was finally extinguished in five days. Entrance to the city was closed. Fortunately, the nuclear charges, which were kept there on Okolnaya, remained unharmed. And although experts say they could not explode in principle, such are the conditions of their storage, there was a risk of dirty contamination of the territory. However, the residents of Severomirsk were frankly lucky that the wind blowing away from the city carried away the toxic cloud created by the combustion of the rocket fuel. Under unfortunate circumstances, thousands of people could have been victims of chemical contamination. The next day a helicopter carrying Commander-in-Chief Ustinov flew over the fire zone, Immediately after this emergency the Admiral of the Navy, Deputy Commander of the NF, Admiral Kruglyakov, was removed from his post, he was still in command at that time. And soon the Commander of the NF, Admiral Mikhailovsky, a hero of the Soviet Union, Doctor of Military Sciences, was removed. The official version of the investigation into the cause of the fire is that it was smoking in a wrong place. A cigarette butt ignited dry moss, which caused the fire to spread. The perpetrators were convicted but experts expressed doubts about the reality of this version. The number of deaths could not be found in official sources. Unofficial sources name numbers from 7 to 200 dead. The uniqueness of the situation of the explosion in Okolnaya is that the fire and explosion of the missile depots simulated the situation of the beginning of a nuclear war. The explosions were very similar to nuclear in form and power. A combat preparedness number one. In fact, throughout the Northern Fleet, which is only declared at the beginning of a war. The catastrophe at the missile silos has shown the weaknesses of missile storage, civil defense organization, evacuation of the population, preparation of bomb shelters, informing the population about actions in case of war. The Soviet Union was preparing for a world war seriously, and for a long time. The army had accumulated huge stocks of ammunition. Russia inherited from the USSR millions of tons of bombs, mines, shells, and missiles. Together with them Russia inherited an obsolete infrastructure for storing all this explosive economy. In Russia the risk of explosions at military depots will become minimal after all obsolete ammunition is discarded and old military warehouses are completely closed. According to a special federal target program it should happen before the end of 2020. If you were interested, thank the author by putting a like. And also do not forget to subscribe so as not to miss the outputs of even more interesting videos of my channel. Turn on notifications by clicking on the bell and share this video with your friends.
What else interesting can you add to this video? Write in the comments, it will be interesting to read.